Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi horror film. John dies at the end. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with David, alone in a Chinese restaurant, where he sustains the side effects of some sauce that he had taken six hours ago. Despite having hallucinations, David can count the grains in a plate of rice, including their specific details because of the side effects. David snaps out of his hallucination when a reporter calls him. Reporter is supposedly helping David publish his story. The scenes then show and follow David's stories as told by reporter, who cynically asks if he would describe himself as an exorcist or spiritualist. A flashback shows the first explanation of what he really is. David wakes up from a morning call from his friend John, asking him to get some beers before coming to his place for an urgent matter. David packs up his shotgun and other stuff used for a fight before arriving at John's place. There he meets a gorgeous woman who has been harassed for the past weeks by her boyfriend, but the boyfriend has been revealed dead for two months. Now only she can see and hear her late boyfriend, who still manages to hurt her. Knowing this, John informs David that he has already told the woman that they will look into her home to check and make sure that she's gonna be safe. The woman takes them to her house and shows them to the basement, where she sees her boyfriend often. They inspect and find a freezer full of frozen meat, prompting them to think that the guy might have been a hunter. As they talk, David realizes that he and John see different versions of the woman. As they turn around to leave, the woman is already sitting at the stairs. David confronts her about how they see different versions of her, but the woman suddenly crumbles into snakes, forming a monster from meat products from the freezer. The monster grabs David using sausages and claims it has been waiting to meet its nemesis, the psychic. It immediately frees David, as John clarifies that they are not the psychic. John offers to contact the psychic, and the monster will release them in exchange. They call the psychic as they have a direct line with him, since they work in the same field. David informs him about the monster, who blows up as soon as he puts the psychic on the phone. The psychic ends the call and returns to the stage, leaving them in awe. The scene then returns to Reporter, who is annoyed by David's cynicism. Sensing Reporter's doubt in his story, David uses his abilities to describe every content of Reporter's pockets. However, Reporter remains skeptical, so David describes the twisted dream that Reporter had the night before, freaking out Reporter a little bit. The tale goes on as David gets Reporter's full attention, and the scene returns to the night when it all began two years ago. At that time, John plays with his band at a gig out in a field. There, David meets one of his friends, Fred, who also witnesses a one of a gangsta named Justin, teasing a girl by taking her prosthetic hand away from her. Justin even throws the hand at David and Fred, so the girl named Amy asks for it back, which David gives. David notices Amy's distress and offers her a beer, which she declines. She shares that her dog bit some Jamaican guy and is now missing. Amy leaves to search for her dog, while David walks away and finds the said Jamaican guy. He shows some magic tricks, but David remains skeptical. So Jamaican describes the dream David had earlier that day, drawing a vivid picture of everything. David remains calm, despite being freaked out by his abilities. Jamaican goes on and teases David about whether he would like to know about his future, but David walks away without saying a word. As David returns to his truck, he finds Amy's dog, who jumps into the passenger seat. David sees his dog collar and thinks of contacting Amy. Later that night, a phone ringing awakens David, who senses the distress in John's voice on the other line. Fear is evident in John's voice, as he tells David that something out of the ordinary bit him. John desperately asks him to come. Upon arriving at John's place, David finds his friend delusional and panicky, while his apartment is in a mess. John scaredly tells him to hide as something is on the corner, waiting to attack them. John runs to his room, which David dismisses before going through John's stuff. He takes John's gun, a syringe with a black liquid, and puts it in his pocket, assuming it's the stuff that John has been taking. Unbeknownst to him, a spider-like giant creature is at the corner. At the truck, David asks John about the black liquid, but John doesn't answer and tells him that he seems to be losing touch with reality. He remembers calling David repeatedly, despite David saying he only got one call. John then refuses to be taken to the hospital and insists on going somewhere safe. So David takes him to a nearby diner, where John finally explains that the black liquid is soy sauce, which he got from Jamaican at the gig. They went to Jamaican's trailer, where they took the soy sauce, which allowed him to see the future and other dimensions. David cannot hide his disbelief, but his phone keeps ringing during the conversation. As David answers his phone, he's overwhelmed after hearing John on the other line. John on the phone apologizes for confusing him and ends the call without any explanation. Meanwhile, John in the flesh knows David had talked to him on the phone and apologizes for the people their gun explode. Back in the truck, John soon falls into unconsciousness. 
After ensuring that John is still breathing, David calls a priest and asks for help with demonism. Referring to John's condition, the priest asks David for a meet-up to see if he needs his expertise or a counselor to deal with mental illness. While still talking, the syringe in David's pocket accidentally gets stuck into his leg, causing him to have hallucinations. David tosses the syringe on the empty road, but fortunately, he immediately returns to his senses. As he drives away, a man named Roger suddenly appears in the backseat, puts his hand over David's mouth, and puts an unknown creature into his shirt. The truck swivels as David removes the hand from his mouth until he finally hits the brake. Roger removes his hand and instructs David to drive, which he follows as the creature in his shirt starts moving. Roger is from another dimension from how he speaks and acts, and how fascinated he is with the human race. Roger claims he's looking after David's safety, who must play a vital role in fighting a powerful foe named Korok. Roger adds that he has been studying humanity. While Roger shares his experiences about studying humankind, David manages to get rid of the creature and steals his gun back. He holds Roger at gunpoint before getting out of the truck and stomping on the creature until it's dead. After that, David returns inside the vehicle, only to find that Roger has disappeared and is confronted by a detective. Detective takes him and John to the precinct, where he questions David about last night's events at the gig. Although confused, David tells the truth about how he went straight home, leaving his friends at the party as he has work in the morning. Suddenly, David notices how he knows beforehand what Detective will say during the interrogation. As Detective asks him about the names of the people at the party last night, David realizes two things. The list of those people is either dead or about to be, and the soy sauce that accidentally got injected into him caused these side effects. Detective confirms David's realization by informing him that three people are missing. At the same time, the rest of the mentioned names are dead, and John is the only known survivor of the party that took place yesterday. Detective also mentions that John's condition is not looking good. Detective then shows a photograph of Jamaican, whom David confirms is the source of whatever John had at the party. Detective informs David that Jamaican runs an unlicensed pharmaceutical operation. Detective then shows another photograph of Jamaican after death, leaving him to only bones. The interrogation gets interrupted when an officer enters and calls Detective, who immediately responds to the summoning. Detective returns seconds later and informs David that John has passed. The scene then backs to the present at the restaurant, where reporter expresses his skepticism about David's story and advises him to publish the story as fiction. So David takes reporter to his truck and shows what seems to be an empty cage. David instructs him to look at it from the corner of his eye, which reporter reluctantly follows. As soon as he does, he sees a monster resembling a Japanese monster cap, convincing reporter that David is telling the truth. After calming down, David continues to share his story, prompting the scene to return to the precinct. Detective calms down David and informs him that John must have had convulsions or something, as his pulse has suddenly stopped. Detective assures him that John is being resurrected via CPR while waiting for the ambulance, so he orders David to wait for him and tell them the truth once he returns. As Detective goes, David receives a call from John. John seems to be calling David from another dimension and instructs him to exit the precinct, while the ambulance and other police officers crowd his body. David remains calm as instructed and tells John that there's another cop in the room. However, John informs him that the man there with him is not real, and David confirms it by looking in the mirror. John adds that he's gonna see things like the unreal man occasionally, but he must not freak out. The man suddenly attacks him, grabbing David by the neck and choking him. However, David fights back and disarms the man when the detached arm wraps itself around his neck. David desperately attempts to free himself when the arm suddenly disappears as soon as he exits the room. As David is out off the sidewalk, he realizes that John can communicate with him because of the soy sauce in his system. However, the effects will not last long and their communication will soon be cut off. This confirms when David has difficulty understanding John's instructions as he drives the trailer park to go to Jamaican's trailer. David stops at a trailer with police tape and enters it to find the room almost covered with blood and more police tape. He wanders around and finds a TV, where he watches footage of him being shot by a detective in the same place. Although shocked, David checks outside, and detective has just arrived. David then finds more soy sauce in one of the frozen canned beers, which turn themselves into flies to enter his system. David soon experiences the sauce's immediate effects, such as hallucinations, before detective enters and seems to be not shocked upon seeing him. David helps detective to cover the place with gasoline, as detective holds him at gunpoint. While doing so, Detective reveals that Justin reported whatever happened in the trailer earlier. 
The flashback shows Detective finding Justin in pain on the floor as little white things fly on him. When Detective returns after getting something from his car, Justin seems fine but not himself anymore. Cut back to the trailer, Detective tells David that Jamaican has somewhat tuned hell by turning himself into it, so he intends to close it. After that, Detective pulls the trigger on David, who sees that the bullet going to him has a fly in it. After a while, David awakens to the heat of the trailer being on fire. As he crawls out, Amy's dog maneuvers the truck and crashes into the trailer, so he can exit. Although confused, David takes over the wheel and drives away while John communicates with him. It turns out, Fred, Amy, and Justin are still alive after taking the soy sauce. However, just like Jamaican, Justin will soon turn into a spawning pot thing. John also informs him that the last planet that saw and took the soy sauce was saturated in 100 days. As it turns out, the soy sauce shows David, explaining why he's still alive, unlike the rest that took it. David returns home and finds Justin possessed by a demon named Shitload. David knows it's not Justin and repeatedly pulls the trigger on him. However, Shitload remains undead and tells David that he must come with him. Nevertheless, David refuses, so Shitload knocks him unconscious. David wakes up after a while in the back of a van, where he rejoins with Fred, Amy, and still unconscious John. He only regains consciousness when the dog licks his hand. David informs them that Shitload is taking them to a mall. Fred realizes that Shitload's taking them to the Mall of the Dead, which has been abandoned for a long time. Shitload reveals a ghost door as they arrive, and explains that Amy can only open it because of her arm amputation. However, Detective kills Shitload by shooting him with a shotgun before he is on fire alive. Detective then takes the four friends to his car. There, David reveals that the white things Detective saw over Justin were looking for hosts. As Detective takes over the wheel, he confesses that he knows about the soy sauce. Suddenly, Detective's head explodes, releasing the spirit of Shitload, referring to the white things. The car soon turns upside down, but luckily, they all get out unharmed. However, Shitload's spirit enters Fred, so David has no choice but to shoot him and burn him with Detective's car. After that, they return to the mall with John's weapons, where Amy opens the magic ghost door with her amputated arm. David, John, and the dog enter it, when the door suddenly slams shut, leaving Amy in their world. There, they reunite with Roger, who informs them that he is allied with the psychic. The psychic informs them that behind the portal is a powerful entity named Korok, the cause of all the anomalies they have been experiencing. So they plan to use a bomb to take down the monster and its lair. After taking the bomb, David and John enter the portal. They enter another dimension, where they are welcomed by a man named Largeman and topless women wearing creepy masks. Largeman tells them that their coming was prophesied and that they are in a parallel universe in which Korok, a machine-turned-sentient being, has apparently revolutionized society at the expense of its detractors being slaughtered. After that short but disturbing awareness, Largeman takes them to Korok and continues to explain that since David and John appear to know how to cross planes, they are supposed to give knowledge to Korok by sacrificing themselves so that Korok's people can cross to their plane and continue to spread Korok's greatness. John sneakily starts the bomb timer, leaving them with only a minute to at least severely damage Korok. With Largeman's signal, his men attack John and David to sacrifice them to Korok. However, David and John will not die without putting up a fight. But then, the beeping stops before David and John can escape, so the dog takes things into its hand and reactivates the timer. The dog then jumps with the bomb, sacrificing itself to destroy Korok. As John and David escape, they reunite with the psychic, who reveals that they were only recruited as escorts to the dog and were chosen because they would not have been seen as a threat. The scene then cuts back to the restaurant, where David explains that the dog had been mentally connected with the psychic and Roger after it bit the Jamaican guy and that Korak was probably not destroyed. Amy has become his girlfriend and is still friends with John. Reporter agrees to publish David's story and show the public physical evidence of the soy sauce. However, during their talk, Reporter calls himself the N-word, prompting David to realize that Reporter's self-image does not match what he sees, to which David concludes that Reporter is a product of his mind. They then exit the restaurant and go to Reporter's car. There they find the real Reporter's dead body in the trunk. They assume that Reporter was killed shortly after he contacted David, so as to avoid David's experiences being published. Reporter refuses to believe it and is upset that he is just a manifestation of David's mind, so David pops him out of existence. During the end credits, David and John are seen playing basketball on a court when a portal suddenly appears. They cross and find themselves in a similar court in another dimension, where two men arrive flying in metallic cones and attempt to ask for their help to save their universe. 
The film ends with David and John making an excuse and walking away to return to their universe, uninterested in dealing with saving another one. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.